everyone, it's Megan, and today I'm going to give you some tips on how not to choose a planner. Any video that you watch about how to how to choose a planner is always going to go through some of the same things. What do you need a planner for? What kind of paper do you like? What kind of binding do you like? Do you think hardcover is the way to go? Or would you rather have something that is soft? Would you rather have something that is big? Would you rather have something that is small? Would you rather have something that is all laid out for you already? Or would you rather have something that is completely and utterly blank? Do you want to make lists? Do you want to track habits? Do you just want to memory plan? Or do you just want to track habits? Do you want a lot of space per day? Do you want just a little tiny spot? Do you just need a teeny tiny bit of space? Do you just want a monthly planner? Do you want a planner that is dated? Do you want a planner that is not dated? Do you want a planner that is reflections, journaling? Do you want a planner that is going to push you in a certain direction with prompts? These are all very, very valid questions and you should definitely be answering them. The problem is that there probably are actually a lot of planners out there that will fit the bill for you. And unfortunately, there are, well, I'm not going to say unfortunately, fortunately, there are a lot of very, very, very talented human beings out there that are using an array of planners and making them look so pretty and it makes you want to do the same. However, when you think of your own planning style, is it the same as the people that you're watching on Instagram? If your planning style is bare bones, just writing lists and putting down times and dates, you know, maybe that person who is a purely decorative planner, while their planner is gorgeous, are you going to be doing the same thing with that planner? Probably not. So does that planner still meet your needs? It might, or it might not. I will tell you, if you haven't seen my other video, these are the planners that I set out to use for 2024. The reason being is because over this past year, so the first six months of the year, I was using a Hobonichi cousin and I was thinking, mm, that is, it is kind of big. Let's see how I might do with a B6 because for the first six months of the year up until that point, I had actually been using an A6 or a Estelle and I was consistently using it and it was, and it's so tiny. Right? So I thought, okay, well, this A6, I love this for tracking purposes and for writing notes and for keeping memories. I love it for that. However, I am not hugely into this small amount of space and these blank pages for actual planning. I do, I did try that out a little bit, it wasn't totally working. So I discovered that this size is great for that purpose. So here I am with this A6. Now this is not the same layout by far. It is, it is an hourly planner, but in reality it is around the same amount of space. So I wanted to, I know that A6 is a great size. I know that that particular layout is not good for planning, but it is good for tracking. But I thought, you know, let me give this, give this a try. And it does have, so for me, it does have all of these empty pages at the end where I could do my memory keeping. And here is where I can keep track of the things I keep track of. 
And I'm thinking that in some cases, time might matter. So trying this. I thought that the A6 is not quite big enough. The, the A5 was a little too big. So that's why I decided to try the Sterling Ink Common Planner because it has the same-ish uh, layout as the Hobonichi Cousin, it's just smaller. And then the pages back here are blank. This planner I wanted because I really liked this cover. I wanted the Amanda Amanda's uh, favorite collab with Ashley Shelley last year, and I did not get it fast enough. And this is just a monthly planner, figuring that there's no harm in seeing if this might might work for me. Now, that is those were all logical reasons for me to have these three planners. For work, I use uh, Notion and I use this. It's not a planner. It is actually just a, a notebook and it is meetings pages. It is to-do pages and it's notes. I don't, I, I, I have um, an Outlook calendar that I go based off of. So I don't necessarily need an actual planner for work. So I have this. And I switched from coil to disc bound because in a lot of cases, once, once a meeting has been over for a couple of months, that paper is no longer needed. So why carry it around? I am now into the ways to not choose a planner. The biggest way to not choose a planner is the hype. Or, mm, it's so cute. I need it. Need is a very interesting word because often need to us means want. Cue these itty bitty, super, super adorable planners that Sterling Inc. so beautifully graced us with. And I not, I not only have this, which is they are a weekly planner and it is in two sections. I also got these three different size monthly planners. Mind you, I already have this monthly planner and I have never used a monthly planner before. I mean, I use monthly pages, but I've never had a planner that was just monthly. So I have no idea if that is even a concept that works for me. Never mind if this particular one works for me or if any of these three in particular work for me. So why do I have four? I have four because I decided that need was the word I was going to use in place of want. Now, maybe I might use these and they weren't extremely expensive because they are just these little cute booklets. And I do like carrying around this. I have um, a passport size one that just has notebooks in it. So, you know, I will keep an open mind. But what I will tell you is that the fact that I have these I will call it four because this is this kind of one. The fact that I have these four different planners that I think are adorable and cute is actually kind of stressful for me because now I'm forced to say, well, I have these, I love them, I want to use them, but I don't know how. And they're just, they're just monthlies. And I already have, I have plenty of space between these two to, track my my mood <laughs> my cycle my memories i have plenty of space and to actually plan my weeks i have plenty of space between these and the reason why i now now know i have plenty of space in here is because i was gifted this night owl b6 planner that is very similar it's i mean it's it's a creative rendition of it, which I really appreciate that it is similar but different. I really appreciate that. 
This has been perfect. This has been so perfect for me. So I know that B6 is going to work. I didn't know when I purchased this and I pre, I pre purchased this in July. And this was gifted to me after I did that purchase, before I knew this was going to work. If I had known this planner was going to work so well, I would have purchased it. And I feel terrible about that. I mean, I, I am sure that this is going to work just as well. And that's, that is where I'm going with this, is that this planner might work perfectly well for me. And I already had this. So I already have this when I don't know if it's going to work. It might be perfect. And you know, if I don't use this now next year, I know I don't need a monthly planner unless there is something that has specifically changed in my life that warrants it. Or I could say, you know, monthly planner, absolutely. This one is too big. Now for 2025, I have the option of, well, this one was too big. Let me try one of these other ones. So let me try this B6 or this A6 or this passport. And that's when I could purchase these, right? This one was gifted to me and well, it's a giveaway and I think it's adorable. I, if this was a purchase planner, I would say just because it's adorable doesn't necessarily mean you should buy it because we have all these grand ideas of all the ways that we're going to use planners and the majority of us do not do that. So instead, we either have it on a shelf because we love it so much, we don't want to get rid of it, but then it just goes to waste when we probably could have donated it or given it to a friend or even just resold it. Now, because this was a, was a giveaway and I do love it so much because it, I mean, it, this is nothing. This is clearly not the type of planner I would ever go for. It is very cutesy. There is no space for my own creativity because it's it's so cute. There is the opportunity to put some uh, character stickers in here, obviously, which I do appreciate. I'm going to use this as a just a, a a daily intention type of situ type of you know daily 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 motivation daily daily intention you know wins. I'm just going to use it for something like that because that's not necessarily a thing that I need to decorate, but using some character stickers would probably be good. So I'm, I am going to say if you get something, if you have the opportunity to try something brand new and it is a giveaway, by all means. However, just because there's a giveaway does not mean that you should enter it. I entered this giveaway because I wanted to, I, I liked the idea of getting this planner, one that I would not have purchased on my own so that I could try it out. And it's adorable. I think it's really cute. I did buy the cover, but if it wasn't a planner that I was interested in, I wouldn't have entered the giveaway. When I first joined the, the official planner community, I was entering all sorts of giveaways and I was getting all types of stuff that I did not want or need. And that was ridiculous. I have since gotten rid of a lot of it and I'm very selective about the giveaways that I enter or the things that I accept from brands because I don't I don't really want things that I'm not going to use. I'm just going to say it's just going to be clutterful. So, that is a perfect opportunity to do the purchasing just because it's so adorably cute if it's not costing you anything. So let's let's move on to some some more reasons not to buy not to pick a planner. This is the Spaces Planner. I have purchased this planner for the last two years and I have very sparsely used it. I think it's awesome. I think that there are probably very good uses for it. And the reason why, so the first year I bought it, it was super duper on sale. I wanna say it was like five to $10 because it was the end of the year. What a wonderful opportunity to try something brand spanking new that you have never thought to try before. It is a planner that is basically just an opportunity to write tons of lists, which great. I love lists, you know, sign me up. But this just in the era that I was in the following year when I purchased it, purchased it, I was really loving 
just being super decorative. And this did not allow for me to be that decorative because it's so compartmentalized that I just didn't know how. I just, it just ended up looking silly every time I tried that. So for me, if I'm looking to use this for my personal, just for me, it's not going to, it's, it's not going to work. I purchased this planner because the owner is, seems like just such a lovely, lovely human being. And it seems like, you know, she's, I identify with her, you know, being a woman and having too much to do. And I don't know. I just, she did a pre-order kind of Kickstarter kind of thing because she wasn't sure if she was going to be able to continue making these planners. So she needed to do a pre-order and he met my goodness and hit a certain number in order to feel confident and comfortable continuing with her business. I will be, I, I'm happy to say that she did. She met that goal, surpassed it, and is able to continue with this company. But that's not a reason to buy a planner. Buying buying a planner, especially one that is of this price point, simply because you feel some sort of moral obligation to do so, or you feel feel compelled for reasons other than that you're going to use it. Or, I mean, it's, you know, it's not, it's not a donation. You know, I, I'm trying to choose my words very carefully because I don't want to say that I shouldn't have purchased this planner because I felt bad. And, and, and I, you know, I guess that is essentially that is why I did, but I don't want it to sound like that. I don't want to sound like I purchased this out of pity. I did purchase it because I wanted to be supportive of another woman. I wanted to be supportive of her dream. I wanted to be supportive of her business. However, that's not, it's not always our responsibility as a consumer. So if there are other reasons why you are purchasing that planner, by all means, but you shouldn't purchase a planner simply because you feel you feel obligated or you feel like you should for the greater good when it's, you know, it is just paper. I am going to actually be using this planner as best I can for the planning between myself and my, and my partner, because this past year has been very, very overwhelming for us. And I think we both agree that having a little more structure will be helpful for us. We, at the beginning of the year, we had, we were having um, like family meetings on every Sunday, just so we could go over the week ahead and see, you know, who had to work late, who had, who was picking up the kids, who was doing gymnastics, all of that. And also taking a look backwards at our budget and how we were doing and how we might need to, to adjust. And, and the reason why we're doing this is because one of the downsides to my ADHD is that it's, I often feel attacked, but attacked for, you know, a, a simple question like, what is this charge? Because, you know, it's the Coffee Monsters Co. And like, that doesn't make any sense to somebody who doesn't know stickers. <laughs> And so, but I always felt attacked, even though for him, all it was, was that he was trying to categorize it correctly. But if we have a specific date and time in which we are talking about these things, I don't feel, I didn't feel attacked. So I plan to use this planner just like that, is that this is what we, this is what we sit down with on Sundays and we will go over the month. And then we will go over the, the week coming up and we'll just use this as a way to structure our conversations. So again, this is, this is a reactive use for this planner. I, I have manifested this use for this planner because I had it. I didn't purchase this planner because that was what I wanted to use it for and that's what seemed like it would work the best. So this is why that is on my list of, of ways to not choose a planner. Uh, this, is, this is kind of a mix of, oh, it's so cute and hype. 
Laurel Denise is just, it's, it's, it's a very unique planner. If anyone has not seen it, it has the month. This is, so this is a mini version. And that is part of the reason why I purchased it. So it has the overview of the month and then it has the weeks. And the weeks you can see at the same time as the months. And that is what is so interesting about this planner. And then it has a section for notes. I saw this planner when it was, she only had the big version. And I was like, oh, that's way too big because it is more... It's closer, it's gonna be closer to the size of, of this planner, but I think maybe a little bit longer. So it's just, it's an awkward size, it's big, it's hardcover, and hardcover right now isn't really my thing. So I just put down the wrong one. So I wasn't gonna get it until I saw that she put out this, this mini one. I was like, oh, it's so cute. And Laurel, Denise just, yeah, her, her energy, her personality, the thought and the devotion and the emotion and the, you know, all of that that comes through, even just through her social media, draws me so strongly to her. And that's why I purchased this planner. And I have done that before, where it's not that I was purchasing the planner, it's that I was purchasing, <laughs> it's, I, I am always saying really awkward things, but it was like I was, you know, I was just purchasing into an idea, you know, somebody that I don't know, but because of her charisma and, and, you know, quite honestly, the adorable reels that she created. You know, like her marketing just, it, it worked. Her marketing worked. You know, I was in a, in a desert, a planner desert in my mind and she was an oasis and she had a product that just, you know, it's, it was a planner and it was interesting. I am going to manifest a reason to, to use it. I'm going to use it for social media. I have, and here's the thing. I have tried having a specific planner for social media multiple times and it has never worked out for me. The only thing that has ever worked out for me is, is simply purely just tracking what I'm doing. So the only thing so far in regards to social media that has helped me is that, that I, that has worked is I'm trying to find a month in here so I can show, but see, this is what has worked. This is the only thing I've done is just so that I can track how often I posted. This was not pre-planned. It was reactive. This planner purchase was on a whim and my usage of it is reactive. I wasn't setting out to find a planner to use for social media because that wasn't Again, if you watch any of the videos of how to pick a planner, and one of them is to decide what your needs are and go based off of, you know, that's one of the ways to go off of how to find a planner. That was not on my list. My list did not include needing a specific planner for social media because I have, I had discovered over the last 12 months that, I mean, at this point, it's been 12 months. I don't know how long it was when I purchased it, but I found that just being reactive on the, and just tracking my social media posts as opposed to planning it was working. My engagement is shit right now. So in reality, doing this probably would be helpful. However, my priorities are not social media right now. My priorities are stretched thin, 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 thin. So not only do I not have time for social media, really, other than, you know, dabbling, I don't have time to really commit to it. Obviously, at that point, I also don't have time to write about it. But, you know, I, and so, as I have said before, I now have this planner that I think is adorable and I think it's awesome and I don't want to get rid of it. So the only thing I have to do is just hope that I use it enough to warrant the money that I spent on it. So again, purchase the planner based off of what your needs are, not based off the person that is selling it. That is a perk. The person selling it is also potentially a deterrent 
you don't want to purchase a planner, even though you might think it's the, the perfect planner. You don't morally, you might not want to purchase a planner from somebody who has beliefs that are that are in direct contrast to yours. That is that is a valid valid reason <laughs> to not purchase a planner. However, purchasing the planner just because you like the person or the per- persona that they portray or the social media they create, or again, just because you think it's cute, that's not valid. It happens. I'm not going to judge you, nor am I actually really judging myself at this point, but just something to be aware of. Um, so I purchased this planner and I will say to you that this is not a way to purchase a planner, but I'm going to say that I don't give a shit and I am happy that I purchased this planner for a bad reason. I purchased this planner out of spite and pettiness, not towards paper test designs because she is, she's, I think that she's awesome. I think that she's patient. I think that she's sweet. I think that she's a much better person than I am. And granted, I this is this is a planner that I was eyeballing last year and was able to avoid getting it because I was like I I used a weeks a Hobonichi weeks planner. It worked for me while I was pregnant and tracking my pregnancy and in reality, the way that I was using, I always say in reality, which is weird. Um, the, but the way I was using the Hobonichi weeks is just like this. I was using it to track sp- so on each day, like my mood and you know, I feel my body and movement and stuff like that. And then just writing ran- writing notes and tracking, you know, <laughs> whatever I felt like tracking that week on the blank page. So I was using the Hobonichi weeks just like I'm using this, but I have this. So using the Hobonichi weeks for using the Hobonichi weeks f- uh, again would not make sense, right? If I was already doing what I was doing in the Hobonichi weeks in this planner, it wouldn't make sense, right? Am I just going to be doing it twice? So if I have this planner that is going to take the place of this planner, obviously I don't need another Hobonichi Weeks. What else What else do I feel is a good thing for this planner? I think that this would be a good... I think that this would have potentially been a good substitute or a good replacement for this one. I think it could have been because it has the it has the same same ish setup on this side, and then on this side it just has more structure for me, and it has all these blank pages back here that could be used for for notes, for pictures, for lists, for memories, you know, for all anything that any any you know journaling that I might want to put but doesn't fit, I could put it back here. So I don't need this. <laughs> I don't, I, it's, it's, it's really pretty. It's really pretty. It's the Tomoe River paper. It is, I, I love this interesting structure over here, but I don't need it. I wanted it. And I wanted it because I wanted to support paper test designs because of all the shitty people in her Facebook group that were mean. And, you know, honestly, I guess there was also a little part of me that was like, I want, I want to purchase the planner that, you know, they don't deserve. I don't know. (laughs) I, again, I am totally okay with the fact that I purchased this. If you watched my planner non-stack video, you'll, you can hear my whole spiel about what happened in that group and hear my, my emotion about it. But it is on my list of reasons not to purchase a planner. Don't purchase the planner simply because you're mad at the other people who purchased the planner. If that's where you want to put your budget, then that is where you put your budget. So I'm not talking about how you spend your money. I'm just talking about if you're just looking for the planners that you need, that is not a reason to buy it. And, you know, when it comes to prioritization, you're not just prioritizing your 
your, your money, but you're prioritizing your time. So by the time you have filled your life with 10 different planners that you don't know how you're going to use, plethora of notebooks, and they're all just sitting and they're going to sit. They're going to sit for, for years. They're going to sit. They're going to sit just like my pile of books. They're just going to, all this stuff is just going to, it's going to sit and it's going to pile and it's going to take over, take over your life and your family and your house. And the next thing you know, you have no space. You're just overwhelmed. None of the lists in the whole world will help you get out of it. And then you're forced to, I don't know, go into those creepy buy, sell, exchange, pay $150 for washi tape groups, and then get some of your money back. You know, this is chaos. So I hope that this was enlightening. I hope that it wasn't offensive to anyone because again, like I said, this is not about how you spend your money. You can spend your money however you want. You can buy 15,000 planners and you can, to your heart's content, post about them on social media and let me know how you're using each and every one because quite honestly, I am intrigued and I'm curious. I want to know. I want to know how you're using all those planners. I want to know how you are fitting them in your day. I want to know how they are helping you succeed. I want to know. I want to know all of that. So please, 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 please keep doing it. However, if you want to be more mindful, be more careful, spend your money wisely, spend your time wisely, then I hope this video was helpful. And that's all I'm going to say. I definitely encourage you to go into the comments below. Let me know if any of the things I have said resonate with you. Let me know even if some of the things that I have said have offended you or have made you feel in any way negative or down or anything like that because I also want to know those things because these are all just my opinions, right? They don't they don't translate they don't translate across the board, they don't translate across the world. They just I I hope some of it resonates with you and you know, share any tips that you have received that have been helpful or that have not been helpful. Let me know any of the traps that you have fallen into if I didn't specifically go over it because I know this is not an all-inclusive list. And, you know, other than that, support, support, support these small businesses. Don't be mean. Don't be an ass. You know, we're all human. We're all doing the best we can to get by. Follow me on Instagram, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, share this video to the whole world. That'd be great. I would love to have a video hit over a thousand views. I haven't gotten there yet. And uh, yeah, so enjoy the rest of your day, week, month, year, what have you. Um, and uh, take it away, Eloise. I love you. Mm. <laughs> I like you,